We pray for Ukraine or you reign. Greetings, all of you, most beautiful, beloved children of God. Pray, Almighty, for blessing you. This speech, I found it more difficult than uh, most other speeches I have made before. Okay, remember, we talked about uh, making this world into a paradise before. And I said that it's like impossible because uh, none of the masters have been able to do that. But just recently, I remembered that there is a way that we could revive this world. Now, thanks to God Almighty that I am made to remember this method of saving the world. This method involves the death of the Master, either completely if it fails, or temporarily for a short while and then revived. After the Master is revived, then the Master has more power. And then, because the death of the Master will somehow delete some of the karma so she he can revive and become more powerful in order to continue this way this method to save humankind and the earth easy to say not easy to do not easy to accomplish after the karma is all removed the karma world will collapse or to quote precisely the words of His Majesty, the King of Karma. The Karma world is killed. Now you ask me, what is the catch? Ah, the catch is that at the moment, you know, the percentage of human vegans is not enough. We need 50 plus percent more vegans than the percentage of vegans that we have right now. So let's hope it will be fulfilled and as soon as possible. Please praise God Almighty for allowing us to have a choice in this matter and arranging all incredible patterns and rules and ways so that this project has been done up to date 95%. I knew it was done when I heard a bang within the heart of our planet. Not a big bang, of course. That's when the whole cosmos was created. Just a small bang. But it was a big bang for me. And all the bird people kept coming as near as possible to sing happy songs like a chorus. Please continue watching to find out more. While in her meditation retreat to help humanity and all of its co-inhabitants, on Saturday, November 18th, 2023, our most beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, graciously revealed in a vital message a way for our world to be renewed a method that involves an essential catch, a timely requirement to be met by humans. Greetings, all of you, most beautiful, beloved children of God. Pray, Almighty, for blessing you. This speech, I found it more difficult than uh, most other speeches I have made before. I just don't know why. I haven't got time to do research into it, and I just hope I can make it to the end, though I have prepared it, uh, you know, doing more research into the unknown universe.
It took some time, but still, up to the last minute, it was difficult to even try to make it into a formulated form of talk. Now, I've been praying, and I try. I still try. Many times already, I recorded it, but a little bit, and then it couldn't go, and I deleted it. Maybe because I was hesitating to reveal this before, for a while, but I have to do it again and again and again. Hope this time it works. Okay, remember we talked about um, making this world into a paradise before, and I said that is like impossible because uh, none of the masters have been able to do that. But just recently, I remembered that there is a way that we could revive this world, I mean renew or revive, meaning make it different than the way it is right now, and you could save the world. But there is one uh, difficult catch. Well, I'll tell you that at the end. If that catch will be fulfilled, which is not a lot actually, it's just difficult because humans don't want to change, that's all, with very little asking. To be vegan. Okay, now, there is a way to revive the world, but it's not so simple like <laughs> you imagine, like, okay, Master has a uh, big power, can just uh, wave a hand or say hula hop some incantation and then it's done. It's not like that, okay? But nevertheless, it's doable. It's like this, okay? There are two ways to renew this world. The first one is the one that most of us know, that the world will be destroyed. I mean, the world population will be almost all destroyed maybe very little left, like 5% of the population or less even, then they will start all over again, like Stone Age or long time ago age. But there is another way we can renew the world without so much death and destruction. Nevertheless, it takes a lot, a lot of work. I would just tell you as much as I can and as much as you can grasp it. It's like this. Number one, first of all, the master, well, whoever wants to do this kind of thing, master, has to die. But if this master is powerful enough, then she, he can revive herself, himself again after a short while and almost like being born again, yeah, renewed birth. And then, after that, she, he could use more strengthened power to change the world. But it's not like that, okay? We have to reckon with the karma of this planet, which is immense, 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 unlimited, and, oh God, you can't ever imagine how huge the karma is <laughs> that has been accumulated <coughs> since long, long time. <coughs> since we don't even remember. Uh, you see, that's why now and again we have a pandemic or epidemic or war or famine or, or natural disaster or man-made disaster to lessen the population of the planet. The people die, suffer, are maimed or disabled. A lot of things happen to a lot of people, and death as well, of course. And then the karma of the world would be a little bit less, so we continue to survive and live on. But then we continue to make a similar karma again, again, and again, and then it will pile up until one time it will bust out in disaster, diseases, pandemic, war, famine, etc. As we can see nowadays, is urgent and desperate. So 
it looks like that the war is going to end, and it is. And we saw how many、uh, clairvoyant persons who have this ability to foresee the future, like Nostradamus, for example, or Baba Vanga, and many others that we have been trying to do research on, collect them, and then show it on our remastered television. And you would ask me why they keep predicting that the world will end, you know, like imminently. At that time, but then it has not ended it, yet. Okay, it ends when the time is right. It's just because these clairvoyant people saw things while they were in connection with higher heaven. The time in heaven and the time on our planet are different things.、Uh, one second, one minute over there could be, you know, hundred years on our earth. So don't say that they did not predict correctly. They did. It's just that we have to thank the grace of God Almighty, mercy for ultimate master, and all the compassionate saints and sages who lend their immense merit and blessings to uphold our world up to now. Otherwise, we would have been gone. Nothing would be left. Instead, there was less of. Degree of destruction and less numbers of deaths of humans and animal people as well, and less of other destruction. You can see it very well. We tried to show it on our Supreme Master TV.、Uh, please look at it, and you know what it means. Okay. Now, thanks to God Almighty, that I am made to remember this method of saving the world. This method involves the death of the master, either completely if it fails, or temporarily for a short while and then revived. After the master is revived, then the master has more power, and then, because the death of the master will somehow. Delete some of the karma, so she he can revive and become more powerful in order to continue this way, this method to save humankind and the earth. Easy to say, not easy to do, not easy to accomplish, but okay. I make it short and simple. The reason why all the masters came and could not. Revive or save the world is because it wasn't that end time, not like this time. And also, when the masters are on the planet, they have to shoulder the karma of the world. That is very, very heavy. You know, the Buddha say it can cover the whole sky, and you know how vast the sky is. So mostly, when the master dies, the world karma will. Uh, dissolve because they absorb it into themselves while they were alive to elevate humankind. So when the master dies, that karma will not exist anymore with the master because the master doesn't have a body, mind, and brain anymore to keep that karma of the world. Yeah, when when the master dies. That means karma is dissolved, and if the master revives again, or relives again, then <coughs> at that time the karma is not yet piled back up. <coughs> so <coughs> the master can revive and renew the connection with God Almighty, with the ultimate master to. Replenish all the master power again, and then that master can use the power to renew the world. I told you this speech is very difficult. Very difficult. It's difficult to talk, even though I knew everything already. It's difficult to express somehow. This is not an easy subject. Okay, try to understand, please. But it's not the master alone. Master has to work with the karmic system. 
and has to do it in secret. Even the Lord of Karma could not know about that, could not know that the karma of the world is going to be removed. Okay, I make it short. After the karma is removed, it will be locked in a yard. I don't know how to call that. It's not a planet. It's not a yard like your backyard or, you know, front yard. But it's called a yard. It's not called a planet. And that yard, it's gazillions, gazillions of gazillions of gazillions of gazillions uh, uh, times larger than this planet. And it's zillions of zillions of zillions of zillions of zillions of zillions of light years away from this world. And that yard has no trees or anything like the way we have in our backyard. It's flat, it's not round like this planet. You can call it a sand yard if you want, <laughs> but gazillions, gazillions, gazillions of times <laughs> bigger than this planet. And that yard, if you could see it, is covered by sand. It looks like sand and it's a pearl-like color. It has nothing else on it. That yard, so far away from any other planets and galaxies, can be locked forever, or at least for now, and nobody can ever open it. Actually, to quote the exact words of His Majesty, the King of Karma, no one can key it. They're not my words. The key for that. I will not tell you who keeps it or where. Mm. <coughs> Even if you kill the key keeper, <coughs> it won't help anyway. <coughs> so I'm not afraid of that. It's just that it's not allowed to be told. Now, after the karma has been removed and stored in that yard, then the world is free, temporarily, until things are more settled and meet the requirement, the catch that I have told you of before. Right now, it has not yet met that standard, but at least we have a big hope for the future. Uh, let me turn this off and I try to remember what else. Okay, I've just looked into some of my notes and I remember now something more. And that kind of yard that I just mentioned has sand, but it's kind of wobbling sand. It's not flat and stable like the sand on our beach. Is wobbling. I don't know why it's, it's wobbling. I don't have time to research into that. Besides, it's not that important. As long as it can contain the karma, then I'm happy already. <coughs> oh, God. I have to turn on the light to see some more because I talk in darkness. I have more concentration without light and without seeing anything around me. Recently, it has been like that. I don't talk with a big light or camera is in front of me with a cameraman and all that, like before. I have to concentrate deeply, more profoundly than many other public talks. So if I want to read a little bit of my note, I have to turn the flashlight on and off quickly. It's not simple, yeah? After the karma is all removed, the karma world will collapse. Or to quote precisely the words of His Majesty, the King of Karma, the karma world is killed, meaning no more world 
will be created with all that kind of karma that humans have made all this time, meaning that no karma world will be in existence due to that energy of the huge, huge, huge karma of humankind. So the karma king, of course, would have no job and would complain. Like, for example, this cannot be allowed like that. How can you remove karma? It's removed in secret, but after it's all gone, he will know. And, of course, the Master has to tell him that this is not fair to put all that work karma on a Master, because the Master didn't do anything wrong, just tried to help the children of God. And that's what God wants the children to be good, to be helped, to be free. So according to the karmic law, this is not fair, not just, that the Master has to be punished alone, and even then cannot clean all the world karma. So for that, I told the karma king that either he has to ask God for another job, or I will find a job for him, or he just follows me and goes to the new realm with me and relaxes, enjoys privilege, pleasure, happiness, and bliss, instead of day in, day out having to look at those ugly documents of humans' uh, wickedness and suffering and animal people's torture and all that, and write it all down. That's no good, is it? So he agreed. That's one thing. So he will follow the teaching of the Master and will go to the new room and enjoy the relaxed, beautiful time instead of dealing with all this ugly stuff from humans and other things uh, that are so ugly, so gruesome, so cruel, so... Uh, you know it, I have no words now. So terrible, terrible. And, of course, humans who stay on the planet without karma temporarily, everything is on hold, will not be punished and whatever exists will continue. But the demons and the devils, who have no souls anyway, who were born and lived by the bad karmic energy of humans, and maybe some animals, or just humans actually, animal people, they're just doing their job, even though it doesn't look good for the animal people, their job they're doing, but they're helping the, the planet to be rid of disease or negative zombies in the sea or in the mountains or in the earth, for example. So only human beings doing things consciously, purposely, that create such bad, terrifying energy to give birth to demons and devils. Thus, these have to also be removed to some other uninhabited planet with no other beings there, similar to the yard that I mentioned before. And they have to stay there until they move into some kind of a hellish world or and until they perish automatically with time, until the time comes when no more bad energies fit them, fit their existence. Oh, this speech is difficult. I keep stumbling with words. I feel it's difficult to talk. You know, it's difficult for words to come out, not smoothly. So now you know what it's like. You know, it's a lot of work. It's not all that easy. Okay? But it is doable. Thanks God. Due to God's grace, it's doable. Now you ask me, what is the catch? Ah, uh, the catch is that, at the moment, you know, the percentage of human vegans is not enough. Maybe at the moment only 30% are vegans. Vegetarian, 
is not much help because they're still linked with the animal people through their milk or their eggs or even eat fish people and call them vegetarian. So uh, they are not pure enough to make some bricks to build this project of salvation. So vegans are the ones that can save the planet. <clears throat> After all the hurdles have been removed, the karma has been removed, for example, like that. And with the agreement of His Majesty, the King of Karma. Oh, by the way, the King of Karma is also reincarnated on Earth, just like any other human. You see? Yes. Uh, what else now? Okay, okay, fine. Uh, a person who incarnates on Earth, any person, mostly, if they are human, they have a soul, they have some job to do. I don't mean a physical job. I mean, apart from a physical job, they have another uh, duty. Just like, for example, the Buddha or Jesus Christ, they were born as humans, but they are not human. But even then, when they were human, they had to do their uh, duty for some <coughs> period of time or all their life. It depends. <coughs> like Kabir, Saint Kabir, he had been working as a weaver, you know, all his life, yeah? And had a wife even. But the wife was also a saint, an absolutely obedient disciple. I told you many stories about how obedient she was. Okay? So we don't waste a lot of time here. And uh, Buddha was a prince, you know, right? And had a wife, had 500 concubines, and a son even. But then that's not his only job. Later he uh, relinquished that position as a future king and became a wandering monk. You know the story, so I also won't repeat it. Just for example, the Buddha was born as a human, but he is a Buddha. Jesus Christ was born, looked like a human form, but he is the Son of God, the only Son of God. So um, the King of Kama also is born on this planet in order to really connect with humankind, in order to know what they do more precisely than if he just stayed in the karma world and just uh, looked through invisible instruments. It's more precise, more accurate, more effective. If any saints and sages or any dutiful divas want to do their duty well, then they have to be reborn also on the planet as a human. And that's why many scriptures and good religions always mention that you have to find a living master because electricity in the air has no use to you, to your appliances in the house, if you don't have a cable and a socket to plug your instruments into to take electricity for it to work. Okay? Just the physical world is like that. In the heavenly world, it's not like that. It's different. You don't need physical instruments, but you still need masters, even though they're not in the physical like the humans. But you still need masters to teach you more, to bring you up to higher worlds, etc., and bless you more if you're not already in their world <coughs> or in a higher heaven. Yeah. Not just anyone who attains the fifth level or four level can be a master. It has to also be decided, assigned by God Almighty <coughs> through the ultimate master. Okay? In the physical world, the ultimate master also incarnates as a human and then decides, blesses whom to be his or her disciples and then teaches them and elevates them to a higher dimension. And in the higher world, the ultimate master also manifests in different levels in order to teach other beings. But there are also all the saints and sages and all the 
kings of different worlds helping, Buddhas of different planes also helping. If you are already in a higher dimension, just like uh, in the world, you have different teachers for kindergarten, for primary school, for high school, for college, for universities, etc. <sighs> Now, where am I? Forgot what is it then? Um, I turn off this recording and I have to remember or read my notes. <coughs> okay, I'm back now. I just remembered. This car is very huge, very huge, very huge. So it's not like you say, okay, I'm going to remove the karma and it's done. It's not like that. It takes, oh, it could be years, slowly, secretly. But the thing is, you can't do that by earth time. You have to do that by heaven time. It's quicker. Just like one year, it becomes like one second. Or ten years becomes one second. Similar like that. It could be more, okay? I'm just saying some numbers so that you can grasp the difference. And do that by the heavenly method and with the soul and the power of the ultimate master, which is manifested on earth, with the help of the ultimate master in high heaven. Uh, speaking with the ultimate master's own word is yonder, in word yonder. That's what he said to me. <coughs> and above all, of course, by the grace and mercy of the Most High, Almighty God. It takes a lot of organizing, arranging, and, uh, how you say, negotiating. <coughs> if it could be done, okay? Like that. Uh, well, what else then? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not only that, you have to also befriend this so-called key of karma store, eh? mm. the person who keeps the key of the karma store, the person who knows how to open that. Not the one at the yard, no, before that, before you remove it to the yard, you have to know and work with the person who has the key. He's a storekeeper, you know, just like in any uh, shop or in any office, uh, some person who has the key, yeah? It's not necessarily that only the boss has the key. Even a cleaner of the office would have the key to go into the office to clean every day. Or a supermarket shop cleaner, you know, the boss would have given him a key, the trusted person, to go in every day to clean the shop. Or even one of the very simple low-key employees, yeah, okay, right. But if this person, the employee of that office or that shop, would like to do something with some of his friends, then the boss should never know. Maybe take some things out or hide it somewhere for their own sake or for other people's sake, but the boss cannot know. <laughs> if they want to move the whole shop, that is much more difficult. Maybe they have to wait until like Christmas time or some big holiday, then the shop will close so many days and they will remove a lot. And then later they remove more, some and some and some, every day or every week or something like that, when the shop closes, okay? <sighs> this is easier to understand and easier to do than to remove the karma. The immense, immense, immense could cover the sky many, many times over karma store, karma amount. Then it's much more difficult. I can't explain it all in human language, but eh, I make it easy. Then you imagine it. Even now, I still I think how impossible the task was. And while carrying it out, it all seemed forever work and impossible to be done. Now, uh, the good news is 
is 95% done. I knew it was done when I heard a bang within the heart of our planet. Not a big bang, of course. That's when the whole cosmos was created. Just a small bang. But it was a big bang for me. And all the bird people kept coming as near as possible to sing happy songs like a chorus. Even inside all closed doors in winter, you still can hear them loud and clear. I asked why. They even told me about it. They knew about it, about the bang that renewed the world, and they sang grateful songs to God. All this that I have told you now is done, but I'm still waiting for the cat to mature. You know, we're still waiting for the vegan critical mass to come in, because right now the human beings are at only 30% vegan, yeah? But luckily we have tons and tons and, oh my God, numerous animal people who are vegans as well. And that's added on to our luck, to our store of merit. But we're still short by another 50 plus percent. And I hope after a while, you know, because the karma cannot be held off too long. I mean, the new karma that humans are creating cannot be ignored for too long, even for their lesser quantity, because the old karma is in the yard, locked. The word yard is also from the king of karma when he was ranting about how illegal we were removing the karma. No one can key it. <laughs> no one can key it. They're not my words, actually. I would say no one can open it. But no one can key it are the words of the king of karma <laughs> when he complained and told me that uh, the, the yard which stores the human karma, no one can key it. But <laughs> I never knew somebody could use the words like no one can key it. I hope you understand. That means no one can open it. No one has the key to open it, okay? No one in the whole universe. All right, then uh, uh, what now what I want to say? Okay. And the new karma of humans who are creating it every day is still very much less to have to deal with, you see? Only when it's a long, 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 long time, then it uh, piles up, then we will have disaster, climate catastrophe, pandemic, war and famine, etc., etc. So now, meanwhile, we're waiting for this 50% to come in, to add it on. We just have to really diligently thank God, pray, and, uh, and change. And you... My so-called disciples, please go out, try all your might to convince people to be vegan. Don't just be lazy, fair, and master does everything, master knows what to do, master is powerful. No, these things don't concern the master alone. Humankind has to contribute. And that's the only way that we can get out of this problem and evolve and be liberated while still living on earth. And if continue this way, we will have peace forever, forever peace for humans, animal people, and all kinds of beings on this planet. That is the outcome of this project, okay, of this method, of this way. 50% vegan is not much. If all the vegetarian people also change into vegans, that would help also. All these vegan animal people and also vegan babies, because when they were born, they did not eat any meat or anything. Their breast fed. All this will be counted in. And all the animal babies who, even though when they grow up, they might eat meat, but when they were born, they did not. All these animal people are vegan animal people and are adding to our percentage. We have to thank them forever. We have to thank God's grace that 
has even created the vegan animal people for us to help in this time of dire emergency. Now, the vegan animal people have to be natural vegan animal people. And the vegan people have to naturally, voluntarily be vegan. Otherwise, they won't count. And the animal people who are raised in a factory, locked in there, and fed all kinds of antibiotics and, and drugs into their system, they don't count either, even if they are fed vegan. That's a different system. They are not pure enough to add to our percentage of the vegan population. So we have to rely only on the wild animals, people who are naturally vegans. They are so pure and they are still connected with heaven and earth. When we are vegans, we are more connected with heaven and earth, know it or not, like it or not, it's like that. So all the animal people in the factories, not only they can't help us even if they are fed vegan, but they are making a burden for our karma, more karma for us. No help at all, especially those who own the factory and the, the workers who kill every day like that to feed themselves. That is horrible karma for them. These might not be counted as those who will be uh, blessed and free like normal people who became vegan and don't kill anything. Even though they have been eating animal people, meat or drinking milk or eating eggs and fish people before. But if they turn vegan in a very short while, they will be cleansed and pure. And that, of course, we add to our percentage of vegans on earth to bring in forever peace for all beings, not just humanity. My God, I hope that day will come soon. If you see that things happen, you know, resulting in peace and veganism, then it will happen quite soon. The peace will come first and veganism will come quite shortly afterward. If you see that happen, then be happy, knowing that this project works for your advantage. And if it doesn't work, then you won't see anything like that. Okay, conclusion. I have tried this with the immense, immense, immense grace of God Almighty, the Most High, which we can never praise and worship and give obeisance, give gratitude, whatever we do. However many lives will never be enough. And of course, by the mercy and love of the ultimate master in the world beyond our imagination, plus all the saints and sages in the Ten Directions past, present, and future. We love them all from all our hearts, but we are still connected with uh, the Ultimate Master by some link, of course. You know that. Well, I hope you know. It doesn't matter if you don't. The important thing is to rescue this planet with all beings on it as soon as possible to save as many as possible lives and to redeem as many as possible souls after they leave this physical domain. Those are the most important things. It's not important who did it. Okay, it has been done. And we pray for the result and we try our best to convince others to be vegan the sooner the better. Because uh, the allotted time may also run out. Everything has some certain given time, you know, to mature, to adjust, to repair, and to follow up. 
on this planet, in the physical world, nothing is forever. The same with everything else, other abstract, invisible things. I don't sleep well. I don't taste food so well. Even just once a day, it doesn't taste very good. But God will nourish me. Otherwise, the ultimate master will keep me alive and well. It's just that I really hope and pray to see that day will come soon when all humans are free of all burdens, sorrows, and worries and live in bliss and happiness, you know, the way they should do, even in this physical domain and on this physical planet. If that day comes, even if I die immediately, I wouldn't mind. It would be the happiest time or happiest day in my life when I know that the planet is safe and all beings are saved and the souls are liberated. Oh, thank God for that then. Amen. Okay, my love, please praise God Almighty for allowing us to have a choice in this matter and arrange in all incredible patterns and rules and ways so that this project has been done up to date 95%. But we need 50 plus percent more vegans than the percentage of vegans that we have right now. So let's hope it will be fulfilled and as soon as possible. I love you all. In the name of God, I prostrate in front of God Almighty every day, thanking the Most High for whatever has been granted, given to us, and for forgiving us, for loving us immensely. No matter how bad we have been, how much karma we have created, and how much damage we have done to ourselves, to others and to the whole world at large. May you remember God forever, every minute, every second in your life, if you can, and feel the blessing showering upon us. Amen, amen, amen. I love you. May God bless us all. I want to really thank you, thank all of you involved in this message, the latest message for tidying words up and uh, making it more audible because I'm not really on top of the world, but you did it all well. And I thank you so much. God bless you, God loves you, and I love you. Thank you, my team, my dearest team, wonderful team for everything you do, not just for this, but for every day, every day. I know how hard you work. And may you be rewarded, even if you don't need it, by heavens and all the saints and sages helping you and supporting you every day. I also help support you from my heart every day. Love you. We are in deep awe and admiration of the most compassionate masters, incomparable self-sacrifices and love in your pure dedication to save and elevate our planet. Each second of your presence in our world is dearly treasured by us, making us believe in the true and unconditional grace of the Almighty. And may all great praises be for God's merciful care of His children. As we seize the opportunity to swiftly and decisively choose the vegan path today, our future tomorrow will leave all of our burdens in the past, reminding us of the heavenly life we are meant to experience. Wishing cherished master to thrive in excellent health and peace in the mighty protection of all cosmic loyal beings. Please tune in for the broadcast of Supreme Master Ching Hai's message with more subtitles on Monday, November 27, 2023 on Between Master and Disciples. 
Also, for your reference, please check out the previous related Between Master and Disciples messages and conferences, such as The Reason Why Souls Come Down to This World The Ultimate Master The Only Son of God The Killing, Terrifying World Between Karma Gap What's This World Made Of? Together We Can Erase World Karma Pray for World Liberation, etc. To view these and more related Between Master and Disciples messages and conferences, all free for download, please visit suprememastertv.com and search for Aminibang.